Like many of you, I too have a bachelor's of science, and like many of you, upon graduation, there was this sinking feeling like, oh crap, what should I do as a career? Well, guys, I've got five career options for you today. Hey guys, it's Brian back at you with another video where my goal is to help you unlock a rewarding career and a life you're proud of. And if you're after that next pivotal role in your career, well, I'm here by your side, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. So if this is your first time here, I want you to know that I made two other videos that expand the job offerings of a science degree. Yes, they're older, so you're gonna have to bear with me a bit, but the big takeaway is that you're gonna have plenty of options with a science degree beyond the typical dentist, pharmacist, is doctor and lab tech. So I've got the links in the description down below and you can watch them right after you watch this video. I know you've worked really hard for your degree and I remember back in the day it was really important for me that I actually used my degree and I imagine it's also important for you too. And I mean we all worked so hard for our degree right? All those exams, lab hours and cramming in at the end of the day, we just want something to show for it, right? And I've had the pleasure of helping many clients just like you find that critical role to set them on a successful career path, and they just became absolutely elated. So I know how much this actually means to you. Here are five careers I'm inviting you to explore. I know that as you progress in your career, you will in time make six figures. Now, bear in mind that these roles are in the context of what I've been exposed to in my career, working with or leading these departments in the consumer packaged goods space, in particular foods, dietary supplements and natural health products. And it may be different in pharma, medical devices and others. And realize that there's just going to be variation in the scope of work and responsibilities from one company to the next and from one industry to the next. So just take it for what it is. But regardless, I hope this video is going to help you put you on a path for further discovery. All right. Let's get to it. The first career I'd like to introduce you to is to become a toxicologist. Now, in this role, you're gonna be looking at contaminants and various substances. Think ingredients, you know, food, medicinal, or otherwise, and realize that everything at the right level can be harmful and toxic to you, even oxygen. Toxicologist will be the one to conduct in-depth research and review the available data and make an assessment to establish what contaminants are naturally present in a given substance and then determine if the levels of which they are present in are harmful or not. The toxicologist may also be heavily involved in establishing maximum dosages as well as defining specification parameters for finished products, income ingredients, and also help build out the supply chain program to make sure that a company won't actually bring in ingredients that have inherently toxic levels of a given contaminant. And when it comes to education requirements, chances are pretty good that you're gonna need an advanced degree such as a master's or a PhD. The next role looks at establishing safety to protect the consumer, a company's reputation, as well as the overall business. So if you're looking at working with your favorite food brand or a company, you could be a food safety expert. And if you're looking at working with a drugs or a pharma, then you're gonna be seen as a pharmacovigilance expert. Essentially, you'll be heavily involved with working with your operation counterparts to establish the manufacturing processes and procedures that will build safety into a product. Not only that, you'll be heavily involved in identifying and rectifying any potential safety issues, conducting investigations, and coming up with a resolution plan. This role will also require that you interact with government agencies like a health Canada or an FDA and report into them quite regularly with the appropriate metrics in place like consumer complaints data, adverse reactions, and the like. Now, in terms of education, it'll vary depending on the sector you're in. So for example, in foods, a bachelor's degree would be sufficient along with a food safety certification, while for drugs, an advanced degree may be required. Like in the video so far, well, let me know and say hello over at Facebook in the Career Advice Club to get more job search tips as well as a signature resume review by me. On to the next role, and it's not really the right title, but more of a function. So I'm going to use the term quality in design. Essentially, this role is about bringing quality up front into the R&D phase of a new product. So some of you may be wondering, like, shouldn't quality already be built into a new product? And the simple answer is yes, but when you factor in human behavior with the realities of been within the department, what typically happens is that the R&D department finds themselves really focused more 
more on innovation than say quality. I mean, let's use a car as an example. The innovation side of things is all about how to deliver a feature or benefit that the consumer will really appreciate, like increasing horsepower or fuel efficiency or better handling. These features resonate better with the consumers and also makes for great marketing and helps elevate the brand. To do these things is no easy feat and requires a lot of people, brain power, prototypes, and more. And essentially, a lot of time and effort and attention is spent on delivering on this promise. So then what happens? Well, there's very little bandwidth left to consider quality. I mean, think about it. Now that we're shoving all this horsepower into the car, so how do we do this in a way where it doesn't ruin the car's lifespan? Or how do we maintain that great quality that consumers expect from us? You see, it's in this moment that they realize, oh crap, we need more people. And yeah, you definitely don't want to come to this realization during production. So enter quality in design. These guys have the expertise in quality and safety, and they understand the manufacturing capabilities of a given factory. They know its limitations and processes and think, okay, well, if you want to shove all this horsepower into this car, here's the type of car infrastructure we're going to need. Here's the type of materials we need to bring in and so on. It's really about building in quality and safety upstream into the innovation process sooner rather than later. And in terms of education, this one will really depend on the industry and company you're targeting. Um, it can range anywhere from a bachelor's degree to an engineering degree. Moving on to the next job that you can consider, and that is a packaging engineer. Now, you know all those bottles, tubs, cans, and Tetra Packs that you have in your pantry and fridge right now? Well, they all have to be assessed to ensure that they can actually be safely used to hold foods, drugs, supplements, so that it protects the product and keeps it within its shelf life. Here, the packaging engineer is going to be looking at the right materials for use within the tubs or the bottles to ensure that there's no contaminants, odors, or off tastes that leak or diffuse into the actual food or ingredient. Not only that, they also need to look at the packaging itself to ensure that it's rigid and structurally sound so that the products can be stacked on top of each other during shipment so that it doesn't collapse on each other. Of course, the packaging engineer would also be used to find the latest and coolest packaging options to help the brand get a one-up advantage over its competition through new shapes, sizes, colors, and more. Come to think of it, there's actually a lot that goes into finding the right packaging that a lot of us consumers, myself included, take for granted. Now, in terms of education, a bachelor's degree is generally what food companies are looking for. Moving on to the next job. Now, if you really love to travel and want to get some real oomph in your resume, you can look to become an enforcement or inspection officer for a government agency. Now, when I say that this is for someone who loves to travel, I mean it, but not in the most glamorous way. You're going to be visiting various facilities and warehouses and auditing them against the regulations and requirements. And some facilities would be located close to a metropolitan area, but other times it's way way out of town. So you're essentially jumping from factory to factory and then writing all these auto reports for these companies to address and prove to you that they've addressed all your concerns. Now, some facilities will be in great shape and other facilities may be incredibly shocking to you and in very bad shape. Now, I may not be painting the most enticing picture here, but if you log a couple of years under your belt and take this experience into the private sector, you're going to be incredibly valuable. These companies are going to be getting direct insight from your experience working within the government. And they also get to tap into your knowledge of what companies have done well, as well as what they've done not so well, right? So your resume is definitely going to stand out and companies will really want to bring you onto their team. In terms of education, a bachelor's degree in an accredited institution will be needed along with an additional or complementary certification as well as certain language requirements depending on the area you'll be working in, for example, French, English, and Spanish. And if you're still wondering what options are out there beyond the five careers that I mentioned today, watch these videos to help you out. And if I've missed any other jobs, let me know in the comment section below. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.